And good afternoon. Welcome into Market Talk for this Monday, December 13th. Great to have you with us once again. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jesse Allen. Find us online, markettalkag.com is our home on the web, markettalkag.com. Find all of our streaming sources there, social media links, and much more, markettalkag.com. We are broadcasting live from our Fargo studios here today and uh, we are uh, happy to talk markets of course as we get into a new week and got plenty to talk about with beans under pretty heavy pressure on this Monday corn just kind of quiet wheat futures and cattle though both had a really good day today let's uh let's talk about it let's bring in our good friend John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing joining us here this afternoon John good afternoon to you sir and um I kind of just ran through the bullet points there a little bit, but a few different uh, things to talk about with the markets today. A couple things higher when wheat and cattle and corn uh, and and soybeans, especially under some pressure today. What's your initial thoughts after the close? Well, let's go touch base on that soybean market. That was the biggest loser on the day. 20 cents down in the old crop contract, solid double digits down in the new crop. You know, again, there we're talking a little bit about the export demand side of things. Uh, Market was already getting pressured. There was a little bit of talk. China did not. Step in the U.S. market for two consecutive days. Now we haven't had an announced export sale. There was talk they picked up some Brazilian beans for January. Maybe feeling some U.S. beans for February. We're pretty competitive, at least there in price, but we're still a little bit overvalued in terms of that South American bean when January comes to play. So I think that's just got the market leading. Plus, we just saw weakness in the in the in the components today or the products, soybean meal, soybean oil. You know, oil has been kind of on a bit of a downside with that potential with, you know, with the energy prices coming down. So we'll have to kind of see how things play out a little bit. Export inspections today, 1.7 million metric tons for beans. That was below expectations. We're still tracking well behind last year's pace and the window's starting to get a little bit narrower. But on the flip side, we keep an eyeball on that South American weather. There's still a lot of talk that we could see some weather concerns moving into the first part of next year. So that maybe just gives us a little bit of support overall. This market may be just working itself in a choppy sideways fashion, still trending downward on the longer scale. So, you know, we're going to have bad days. We're going to have good days. And today was just one of those difficult days to start the week, especially as we get closer to that holiday trade and things really start thinning out here going into the end of the year. You know, and you mentioned on the demand side, and I I think for me today, I wasn't very, um, I wasn't very worried about the soybean market. Yeah, we were the biggest loser on the day. We were down twenty some cents on the board. You know, many contracts, but again, to me, it it just feels like it's a demand story. It doesn't necessarily feel like there's a lot of other underlying factors. It's just the, you know, the matter of fact that, like you said, South America. We're watching that demand window close, and that's just what it really feels like right now. You know, we still got to look at the price range. You know, we had a nice turn off the lows here about a week and a half ago. Basically, we've been trading about a 20, 25 cent trading range over the last handful of days. And today we just went to the bottom. So really was no major break parts technically. It's just some downward movement. And again, with the volatility we're seeing in these markets, you know, 20 cent down day doesn't feel real good, but that's just kind of commonplace. We can turn this thing right back around tomorrow if we see some demand step in again at these lower levels. So, but again, I've been concerned about the B market for quite a while. It still stays as a concern to me. You know, even with some of the weather issues, especially in Brazil, some areas are doing very, very well. They're still going to put a record crop out there and they'll probably absorb some of the production lost that's in some of those drier areas. You know, but that again still comes into play February, March window when we really get those beans online from South America. And then we got to compete against that, you know, on those export prices. Let's talk corn briefly. Corn had a pretty quiet day today, only down just a couple of cents. And you and I were chatting about this off air. Uh, It feels like with corn, we're bumping up against that $6 level. That's our area of resistance that we can't break through. And, you know, another thing, too, I heard some rumors out there about maybe China buying some corn, some rumors they, they scooped up some Ukraine corn and that here last week, but nothing confirmed for you know, corn from the U.S. to China. But as you look at this corn market, does it feel like we're just waiting for that that one news story to push us through that $6 barrier, John? You know, that may be the possibility. You know, we saw that big jump in the market by Mexico last week, picking up that large, large purchase. You know, again, a lot of those are sometimes anticipated. So it didn't really move the market, but it was nice seeing them grab those bushels at these price levels. You know, that China rumor is going to be out there. It'd be nice to see some confirmation on that. We, you know, we'll see how that comes together. 
But, you know, we've been holding around this 580 window with the exception of this last little pullback. You know, we're in the one going back in November. Where do we go? Right back into this trading range. So it feels like we're maybe just getting ourselves a little bit sideways. You know, technically wise today, 10 day, 20 day was support underneath that March contract. It held very nicely. We got December futures coming off here tomorrow. So that'll be some of the reason maybe we're choppy here today as well as, you know, money's moving that around in that regard. So we'll have to just kind of continue to watch. I did like the fact we did kind of climb off those lows. We got some decent bull spreading with the old crop over new, even though it's both negative. You know, it just tells me there's still some support in the market. You know, nothing, like I said, broke apart technically, but, you know, if beans continue to slide or wheat goes back on its uh, downward trajectory, corn will struggle. You know, today it was probably the anchor of beans that probably kept corn from turning, at least trying to get back to positive territory by the end of the day. Let's uh, shift their conversation to wheat, John, and wheat was fairly strong today, uh, probably the strongest of the, of the grains. Uh, and it, it just feels like with wheat, the fundamentals haven't changed. We know we're lacking wheat globally. There's dryness in the southwestern plains. That's giving us some pressure. Really doesn't feel like anything's really changed here. It just uh, seems like those fundamentals helped us after we started a little lower in the overnight trade and got into the day session. We just we had to turn around on, on those fundamentals a little bit. You know, saw a little fall through buying after a nice recovery on Friday. And you know, that was encouraging to see that at least we can consolidate, maybe build a little bit up where momentum here. Again, a lot of resistance over top. You know, USDA did bump up the global wheat supplies as well as the US wheat supplies, a little bit above expectations. Market's still in a bit of a downtrend. You know, that's still the thing I'm looking at right now overall. You know, we need to see that export demand get here to the United States. Russian wheat taxes uh, were $91, million, uh, $91 per metric ton, you know, so that's going to maybe get a little more value back to us, as well as global end users seem to be stepping in again and looking to pick up wheat. So that'll keep prices supported. You know, again, it's a technical versus fundamental type play. The funds haven't gone anywhere in terms of their positioning. Last week on Commitment Traders, they're barely holding a long position in wheat which still kind of gives us a little bit of optimism. As you said, global supplies are still historically tight, at least of available wheat that's on the food, on the export market. So that should keep prices supported. You know, obviously we've got to keep a close eye on what happens on the weather front. What's the quality going to be that Australian crop, you know, and then right here in the United States, you know, looking at the forecast, you know, what's going on with that KC wheat. Maybe that's some of the reason we saw the stronger of the three classes today be that KC with just those overall weather concerns as we'll get those crop ratings here later this afternoon. You know, I know as well, John, I think that we should mention December contracts. Uh, they're getting ready to go off the board and, and we're entering that window here. We're getting towards Christmas uh, just a couple of weeks away. And it's it's going to be um, that choppy holiday trade is what we're most likely going to be seeing here. And I would have to think it's a good reminder for producers. We preach it a lot, but just, uh, just pay attention and, and don't get lackadaisical when it comes to your marketing here through this time period. Exactly. And, you know, typically news gets really quiet. Trade gets thin. We'll get some decent, you know, decent movements in terms of size. But again, usually if things start getting quiet, we just see things kind of move to the downside. If there's no reason for buyers to step in, you know, and with the end of the year, just right around the corner with that, that buying might just stay on the sidelines until the first of the year. You know, seasonally grains uh, after the first of the year, we kind of have a good run till about the Valentine's Day window. Then we'll really know where those South American supplies are, you know, especially corn. You know, I still think we get a chance to run it out to six bucks, but maybe we got a dime to the downside first here. We'll have to see. But, uh, you know, again, keep an eye on those news headlines. Watch the demand. The biggest thing to keep an eye on is the cash market and the basis level. We're talking about it today amongst the group and just kind of saying, you know, what happens after the first of the year? And if producers start pushing some more grain out, they've been holding it locked up in the bins here. You know, the cash market's been trying to pull those bushels out. So do we see some more movement after the first of the year? You know, that could be that window. We see that basis level starting to widen out again. If that's the case, too, that's also just going to be a little bit of a sell signal that we got plenty of grain moving. So keep an eye on that cash market. And again, just still stay disciplined. And take advantage of some of the opportunity that's still out there. 580 corn all the way out to July is still a heck of a price. Let's shift our gears. Let's talk livestock, John. Really good day of cattle today here coming in on this Monday. Um, you know, cash trade last week was a little disappointing. We held steady numbers, but yet coming here today and just a real nice move there about mid-morning. We we turned that market around, turned it higher here. Good reversal. Uh, what did you see in cattle today? What led to that reversal at the futures trade? And what do we 
maybe have to look forward to here this week? You know, realistically, when it comes to news items, there really wasn't anything out there today. I mean, let's do a quick review of last week. Retail prices continued to struggle, especially on that choice carcasses. Saw cash trade actually go steady to softer last week. You know, then the, the outside market stocks were down 300 points most of the day today. So there really wasn't a whole lot there other than those weaker grain prices overall. Some good strength in feeders might have led to some buying in terms of that live cattle market. You know, it wasn't a big up day, up 50 cents on the April, up 75 cents on the February at the end of the day. But it's the fact that we came well off those early session lows. We went down and challenged the lows from the 30th of November. We held those and rejected those pretty quickly. So, you know, and now we put a bearish or excuse me, a bullish reversal into the upside as we took out both the highs and lows from Friday. Now we'll need to see some follow through seasonality now to the end of the year. Typically, if you're long in the cattle market, things seem to work in your favor overall in terms of the historical side. So we'll have to see if this is that kind of turn in here as we're scoring things up. We do have, uh, you know, December options and things of that nature coming off here relatively soon, at least in the hogs. That brings a little more volatility into the markets as well. But it was a good technical turn. Now the key is going to be follow through. And, you know, sometimes when you got negative news, you get a positive turn. That tells you some money maybe wants to step back into that cattle market. You know, and feeders look very, very strong. If grain stay quiet for a while, some of the volatility comes down there. That feeder market looks like it's got some more upside sitting in front of it. And again, strong triple digit gains today being led by that weakness in that corn market overall. One worry I have with cattle is that I'm hearing some talk that there are some cattle uh, forward contracted now through the holidays. Uh, how much of that have you heard? And do you think that's something to worry about with this cattle market? You know, that may come into play on the cash market side of things, but maybe we're in a window here where the basis kind of can widen out a little bit in terms of the futures versus that cash, especially as we get closer to the end of that December contract. Now, December cattle didn't move hardly at all today, mostly actually finished today, mostly negative, settled slightly positive, you know, maybe reflecting what we saw in that cash market last week. You know, so we'll have to see how that kind of plays out. You know, what's going to be the bid as we move into 2022? The demand continues to stay good, especially on the export front. Obviously, there will be longer term concerns regarding the, new, the version of COVID and restaurant trade and things of that nature. On the beef side, you know, we're already seeing states like New York kind of put some more rules in place regardless of your vaccination status. You know, how does that come into play when it comes to the retail demand here of the domestic consumer? So those are things that are still going to be headwinds over top is going to be that side of the equation. But at least in the short term, maybe we can get those April contracts and February contract, poke back up to those contract highs. And that might be a great spot for some producers to start getting some things going. I was pitching buying calls last week for April cattle just to put them out there with the intent to sell into and get those long calls going for the longer side in case this market really wants to take off. Now, what about in hogs today? You know, kind of a down day, kind of the opposite of cattle here. And one has to wonder if we're getting into that holiday season where things are going to slow down a little bit. Uh, what's your thoughts with the hog trade here as we start this week? Well, today was consolidation day. We had a heck of a close the end of the week, even though we still were relatively soft overall on the week. But we saw a nice move in those, those hogs that kind of finished out last week. Today, just kind of sitting and waiting, seeing what we're trying to read. Now, retail values are up 10 bucks at midday, so we're starting to see some pop in terms of that hog prices. In terms of the carcass here, we trended higher most of the week last week as well. Got a few inklings that maybe the cash trade's turning around. The cash index actually traded higher for the first time in a handful of weeks last week, up 63 cents today on that index. So maybe we get a little bit of a inkling that this cash market might be coming around. So that's the case. Makes me feel a little pretty good about things maybe here in this window. But February is going to have a lot of resistance if we get up another three, four bucks around that 84 window. So that'll be you know, something we'll watch. Keep a good eye on those summer hogs. They continue to just grind higher. And typically they do now till first of the first of spring. It's going to set up some great opportunities. Maybe get some hundred dollar hogs somehow marketed later on into the summer months. John, what about the dairy market? Catch us up on what you are seeing there here as we start the new week. Another good day today. Again, come let off by those product prices. Cheese was higher again. That's pushing the milk, milk contracts in the front end to new contract highs, breaking the $20 barrier today. So we'll have to see if that can continue out. I know we've been kind of getting some defense built for people here because that's just historically good value. But the demand is still strong. We're looking at maybe tighter production over next year. We do the count numbers being decreased. 
you know, biggest thing again, watching that export demand, we're going to put in a record year for 2021 in terms of export demand. And that looks to carry into next year. So these higher prices might just sit here for a while, but and be, be there for the producer. But again, great window to make sure we're starting to build some floors. You're looking at $19 plus just short of $20, pretty much all through 2022. John, any other final thoughts you have for us here on this Monday or uh, anything you want to reiterate to our, our listeners today? You know, again, holiday trade is still always going to be a big key this time of year as we get closer to the Christmas break and then New Year's right behind it. The things get thinner in terms of numbers. The volatility will kind of bounce around pretty quickly. You know, this market can move fast if there's not many players out there. So don't be shocked we have days like today in beans. And then we can see recoveries very quickly as things also move into an over undervalued type stage. So, you know, kind of sit tight, set your targets that they hit, be disciplined, make sure you make things out, get things out there and get it moving. And again, then come back and manage the risk overall and just keep an eye on things going into 22. Well, John, I know you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing have a, uh, a lot of stuff that can help people out, a lot of analysis uh, and a lot of just uh Good folks on the team that can help uh, help producers with their marketing. What's the best way to get a hold of you guys? Sure, Jesse. I'd love to chat with them anytime. Feel free to shoot me an email at John H at totalfarmmarketing.com. Or again, check out our website at totalfarmmarketing.com. A lot of great information there. And feel free to call the office. Love to talk with you personally. 800 334 9779 John, appreciate the time as always, sir. Have a great rest of your week. We will talk to you next Monday. Sounds awesome. Have a great week, everybody. John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing, our guest today here on Market Talk. That's going to do it for the Monday, December 13th edition of the show. Find us at markettalkag.com. I'm your host, Jesse Allen, wishing you a great rest of your day.